I'm chatting with Mary Ellen Lundy from An Organized Approach, a professional organizer based in the Southeast Boston area. In today's episode, you'll learn more about a unique approach to organizing and all things textile recycling, donations, charitable contributions, and more. Mary Ellen has built this business from the ground up with no website and no Instagram. She is proof that it can be done. You can check out her Facebook business page at An Organized Approach and see what she's up to in the sustainably eco-friendly organizing space. Welcome to the show, Mary Ellen. Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yay. So tell us about yourself and what called you to get into this field. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Ellen Lundy with An Organized Approach. I help both homes and businesses within 30 minutes of Stoughton, Massachusetts, which is where I live outside of Boston. And I help people take their discarded items and really create this beautiful and unique chain of events. Um, so I often like to tell people that I help people help people. And that's really what I do. I'm sort of like a conduit because people have so much excess things at their home and their business. And so what my business and organized approach gets to do is literally recycle a client's discarded items and give them to hundreds and hundreds of people from teachers to 4-H programs to children collecting for an animal shelter to um, family and uh, sober living houses to shelters. I have the best job in the world. I love what you're doing in your local community. And we started chatting a few months ago and you sent me a whole bunch of your marketing materials. And yes. Yeah, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you'll see that Mary Ellen is fully branded out in her organized approach swag and marketing materials. So I love these. I'm a big fan of old school marketing. I feel like this is something where uh, it gets, it doesn't get as much attention as the shiny things, right? Like now right. we have organizers that are trying to build their business through TikTok, or we have organizers mm -hmm. that are trying to build through um, Snapchat or, you know, Instagram or whatever, all of these things, all yes. these reels, people are obsessed with making reels. Oh, I have to make reels in order to grow mm -hmm. my business. And that's simply yes. not true. Um, so tell us how old school marketing like this is helping to boost your business in your local community. So here's what's so cool is that this is so simple to do. Um, you would die if you ever saw my mock-ups. Thank God for my graphic designer because I am like chicken scratch creating these things where my graphic designer is like, what is that, Mary Ellen? And I'm like, that's, that's obviously the world with some green leaves around it. <laughs> um, so thank goodness for my graphic designer. But I'll tell you folks, people still want to see these. People still want a regular, ordinary business card. And Although there's fancy ways to get business cards now, people really still want this sort of old school approach, if you will. So I do a lot of vendor events. Uh, my town has a Stoughton Day, you know, where Stoughton businesses are promoted. So I get to do that and I get to go out in my actual community. And obviously, as you can tell, I'm not shy. I've always talked a lot. I had no idea I could actually turn this whole thing into a business. Um, yet here we are a while later, but people like to see the work that you do. And although it's wonderful to have, you know, large visuals with things for people, um, I think it's super fun to have a more old school approach. Um, so I have a moving brochure, a general business brochure, and a recycle brochure, um, because people still want to see this stuff. And it has you know, before and after pictures. It has little bits of info about my business, you know, that little tidbit to pull you in. And then it has what I love, which are um, unsolicited words and recommendations from people in my community that have actually received items from me or have been a watcher, you know, or a cheerleader, if you will, for my business. Um, and you just, you can't pay for that. And I think, 
people want to help your business. So it's beautiful when people just say nice things and I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to put that on my next brochure. <laughs> yes. Save those testimonials and put them all over the place. Put them on your social yes. media, put them on your website, put them on your marketing materials, put them on, you know, your business card, you know? Absolutely. Um, and I never thought that I, I, I really appreciate when people give their time in words. And I, I, I love getting paid for things when I do that for, you know, for, you know, if I receive an item, I want to do a review, but you know, it's easy to do that for Amazon. And every once in a while, they might send you a gift certificate or whatever, but I actually have never Melissa paid anyone for any of their testimonials. And I thought that I would, and I, I would like the concept, but I also like to say, people write these things because they want to, you know, on my Facebook page, I think I have around 30 recommendations and they're just real people. They're business owners and homeowners who felt compelled that I did such a great job in their home or business. And they wanted to say that because it's helpful for other people. Well, and it's approachable, you know, it's real organizing for real people. That's what I always built. Let's get you organized on was this is no judgment. This is no fluff. This isn't hoity toity. This isn't snotty. I'm not going to come in and raise my absolutely at you. Um, mm -hmm. so I love that. Also, back to what you said about, you know, the old school marketing pieces of having these really cool brochures, postcards, business cards, all of this good stuff. Um, I know that not everyone is on social media. A lot of people are burnt out on social media. They're taking absolutely social media detoxes. They're taking breaks. They're deleting their accounts. They're like, I got to focus on my mental health or I got to focus mm -hmm. on my family and my kids. Right. And so things like vendor events, things like you said, you know, you have a, um, a local community day in your own yes. town, get involved in your local chamber of commerce, the Rotary Club, the Kiwanis, the Lions Club, libraries, PTA mm -hmm. groups. There's so many of these organizations that are craving support in these areas. They would love to hear a 20 minute workshop on, you know, mm -hmm. getting ready for back to school or a 30 minute workshop on how to downsize as a baby boomer, right? These are right. really great opportunities that I think a lot of pro organizers miss. Absolutely. And I, that was sort of like my grassroots effort starting is that I did, I barely had a business, but I was making up and spending money on printing gift certificates to give them to, you know, the local vendor events to the lion's club, you know, and I would just give them a stack of here's five or six gift certificates for two hours free of organizing. Again, I've always been one of the, I've always been a helper. I've always been a doer, but I get to help people help other people. You know, because those places and those people um, can't survive on their own. They need people like me in the community, those small businesses. And although it's a strain at times, it really is helping people to help people. And so that's a beautiful thing. And let's talk about more on the textile recycling, the donations that you do. Um, I know you mentioned you help, you know, teachers, animal shelters, 4-H groups, sober living mm -hmm. homes. This is amazing work. So tell us about the work that you're doing in those areas. Oh my goodness. Um, I could talk forever and ever, but I will try to keep it, you know, brief. But um, par the paramount always way I have recycled is textile recycling. Um, once you start seeing them, my friends, you cannot unsee them. They're usually large white receptacles all over your town, sometimes in plazas, uh, sometimes near churches um, in the back of the church parking lot. But where they are now is all over schools because especially since COVID, everyone, these are the prime way to fundraise. This is a 24 hour, seven day a week, thing that you can do. Anyone can do it. I take textiles from every single client, whether it's been a marble and granite company, an interior designer, or a photographer. All, every business I've ever done has yielded at least one textile. And so it sounds like, oh, I don't have any clothes to donate, so I can't do that. That's not the case. Everyone has them. I promise you, literally just got a new set of sheets the other day for my queen bed and this was the adorable little bag that it came in guess what it's recyclable 
Um, I've just used it to hold some other cool things that can also be recycled. Those little koozies that you get as a wedding gift, especially if the couple doesn't stay together. Textile, um, your mismatched socks, textile. Even if the socks matched, you can still textile them. Uh, we just got a puppy recently and she went to the groomer and they put this on her. Now it's ratty and textile because it's a fabric. It is fabric. Um, you'll see I have lots of promotional um, bits and I did this really cool one for, um, you know, flag day in the 4th of July and I tried to print it, but it didn't print well. Um, the, my name is actually off of the side. It was a misprint. So guess what? Even though I paid money for this and I love it, I can't promote my business because it doesn't look right. This is a textile. It's amazing. They are everywhere. And again, your good usable clothes can go in there as well as your ripped, tattered, torn clothes, sheets, blankets, pillowcases, washcloths, all of that. It's again, once you see it, you can't unsee it because they're everywhere. <laughs> they are everywhere. Um, so I also take I tell clients that I'll take their items, although I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to recycle it sometimes. But one of the items that lots of clients have is yarn, whether you use it for arts and crafts or whether you're actually a creator and a curator of, you know, beautiful blankets and sweaters. So, but like most people that have hobbies, people collect too much of these, Melissa, and it becomes a detriment at times. So these can go to so many places. This can go as a craft to a 4-H program, to an art teacher as um, a craft. They do so many things with yarn from actually knitting to making tassels and everything. But my favorite way to recycle these is these can actually, skeins of yarn can be donated the way they are and I have I call them my two sewing angels my two sewing angels in my area and I will just package up the yarn and drop it off at their house and they actually will just um keep it for me for the year and make hats mittens and scarves for um people who do not have homes um so those can go directly to shelters or of course your local church will always have a hat, sock and mitten drive around October and November. Um, so dozens and dozens of skeins of yarn can be donated that way as well. So it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, another way that I recycle is people often have candles, random candles that they don't want anymore because people don't use candlesticks. Don't throw these out. People will still want these. They're, they work as fire starters. So any Boy Scout or Girl Scout group will absolutely want them. Um, I help our food pantry a lot. We'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about the free sale. Now, people, I never care, Melissa, what clients keep and what they don't keep. It's, it's totally up to you, what your vision of your home or business is. But most people, let's face it, don't send Christmas cards anymore, especially young families. If they send anything at all, it's going to be a photo card. But I'll tell you folks, these, like a regular box of Hallmark um, greeting cards for um, the winter or Christmas or Hanukkah, those can all be used at your local food pantry. They will want these because they send notes to their clients, especially at the holidays. So things like this, there's always a purpose for them. Um, clients get rid of pens, pencils, markers, crayons all the time. I recycle crayons. I'll tell you about that later if we have time. But pencils, teachers want pencils. <laughs> Crafting, 4-H uh, programs want pencils. Everyone wants pencils, so there's no need to throw them away. Um, I love, love, love. Aside from textile recycling, which is the paramount of my business, probably the second way that I text that I recycle the most is actually teacher prizes. Again, these are at homes and businesses. As a former teacher, I would have loved me. I wish there was me 20 years ago because I spent so much money of my own personal money that did not get reimbursement for buying teacher prizes. Now, the teachers I share with Melissa don't need to do that. 
soap, your little Dollar Tree thing that came from grandma or grandpa in your child's Easter basket, this can be a teacher prize. What a great teacher prize. Your Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King prizes, especially when you have more than one child, you don't need all of these. Great teacher prize, little car, you know, a car. And what's cool about teacher prizes, Melissa, is that any, almost anything goes. And it could be a pencil, it could be a stamp, it could be something cooler because children really are, of course, at their root, excited and they wanna share and they wanna give. So they might find something that Marvel Spider-Man that their father loves or that their grandmother likes. So almost anything goes from coins to jewelry to actual toys in a, in a prize box for teachers. But again, it helps save people money and it helps people to help people. So I'm personally like all about that. Um, I often tell clients that I will do virtually any area. I think I've done every area of people's homes and businesses, um, but I love me a linen closet. I'm just a sucker for a linen closet. Um, and it's unbelievable, especially post COVID where people are home more now, Melissa, and are not traveling. What's happened is all of these amazing samples folks that you have at your house that you don't use anymore of these little soaps of deodorants and things like that. I have often taken, you know, 100 or 200 from a regular average size linen closet. There are so many ways to repurpose these, but simply and foremost, these could go to a group home, these could go to a shelter, these could go to multiple places. But what I love doing is youth groups and, you know, younger teens will often collect um, these products throughout the year, which I do for them. And then I'll just give several hundred at a time, which is always great when things leave my small house. But I collect these throughout the year to give them to teens who use these to make bags for people without homes. And it may sound silly, it's just a little thing, but it's something beautiful. It helps to enrich so many people's lives along the way. Again, that beautiful chain of, of sharing and it's sort of a no brainer, but at the, at the root of what all of this is, Melissa, with all of this, what I call stuff, stuff, there not only is a path to this, um, but there's also a, a beautiful story in that it allows people to let go because people hold on to things for a slew of reasons, as we all know from you know, their childhood, their youth and how they were raised, but it helps people let go. When I say, hey, you know what? I know you have 400 of those soaps and hair nets that have never been used. I know people that can use them. So the majority of my clients have no issue with that and will say, here, Mary Ellen, take these. And it feels good because it didn't cost anything to help people in, in the progression of sharing that I do doesn't cost anything either. It might be, you know, challenging sometimes for my poor husband who lives in, and I'm like, don't touch that bag. That's going to the homeless shelter. Don't touch that bag. That's going to the 4-H program. But he knows that those things are getting a path out of not only the client's homes, but my home and into good hands which ultimately just help people. Yeah, and people wanna give, like you said, it feels good for clients to give back. That makes it, it a lot easier for them to let go, stop living in the someday, stop living in the what ifs. What if I need Absolutely. to- Absolutely. You know, someday I'll use that, right? Um, yes. I love all the creative ideas here, you know, for us listening, we as home organizers, we don't have to throw all this stuff away, have it end up in a landfill. No. For me in my business, and I, you know, I had a little hippie heart when I was living in San Diego. <laughs> and my big thing was batteries and e-waste. So like doing mm -hmm. those tech, say, um, tech disposal events, right? Where yes. you get rid of all the wires. Everybody in every home, I swear, has some big box of wires that they don't know what it goes Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. old laptop chargers, old HDMI cords, you know, who knows what it's for. It's probably from a VCR in the 80s. <laughs> exactly. You know? And so getting rid of stuff sustainably in batteries and e-waste was always my big thing. So 
as you're listening to this pro organizers, think about what are some things that you're constantly seeing in client homes? Maybe it's makeup, maybe it's hair products, maybe it's those samples that Mary Ellen was talking about, those things from hotels, right? The little soap mm-hmm. shampoos. Where can you double down in giving back to your local community? Maybe you pick one area or one category of things that speak to your heart. Um, and I, I love this. I love how creative it is. I want to talk about your work with the food pantry and the free sales before we wrap up today. So tell us about that. Yes. Thank you so much. So as you can imagine, I allow clients to fill my van. I have a minivan. Um, and there's times that I cannot see actually out of the back of my van. So it was figuring out what to do with this stuff all of this stuff that now needs a home because I have to have my children in the car. So I knew I wanted to help people. I mulled it around for a little while and I decided to create the free sale. We are getting ready for the fifth annual free sale as we speak. And I am so excited, Melissa, to um, yet again help um, my local two food pantries, the Sharon and Stoughton food pantries, again, people who are helping other people. So what I have done is I have set up my yard and I will again soon, just like a regular yard sale, Melissa. And there's tables and stuff on the tables, big items are near the street. I have yard sailed my whole life. So this was like nothing and super fun to me. And I put everything out and I just asked that people bring food for the food pantry. Um, I do accept monetary donations, but that's not expected. I just ask that people bring some food. So this really is beautiful and has helped so many people. We have collected probably well over 3,000 food items, but it's not even the money, Melissa. It's, it's, it's not even the amount of food. It's about awareness and simply reminding people of like, hey, Look at how fortunate that you are, that you got to open that pantry door and find nine things totaling, you know, maybe $30 that you could bring and donate to someone else. Um, Not everyone is so fortunate. And I'm raising three children that I think are pretty good kiddos, but I like to remind them and instill beautiful purpose to them that there's more to life than these four walls and you are partially responsible. You know, I can't help everyone, Melissa, although maybe I can with my business a little bit, but I choose to help specific groups in my community. Again, those people that are helping other people. So I have collected, you know, well over a thousand dollars in donations. Someone once brought me a $500 check for the food pantry, I almost fell on the floor. That's a whole other conversation though. But um, I've collected, you know, well over a thousand dollars, but it's again, just that awareness because I've lived in this town for almost 15 years. And I have had people come to the free sale that again, just saw me advertise it on Facebook or whatnot. And they've said, oh, we have a food pantry here. And I'm like, oh yes, we actually have two food pantries. Like let's help people. So again, it's just about raising awareness and I love doing that. And it's, it's, it's really a great community event. And what's so cool, Melissa, is that people look forward to this event. And I actually get messages at least once or twice a month saying, Hey, Mary Ellen, when's the next free sale? I want to come shop, you know, cause it's, it's fun to see the treasures, you know, that other people discard. It's cool. But it's so cool. It's so yeah. cool that you're bringing awareness to to things like you know with the yarn, the your sewing angels that are making the hats and the mittens and the scars for those that are homeless. The food pantry, you know, like you said, some folks don't even realize that there's a food bank or a food pantry. Right. Absolutely. Area. And so really just bringing awareness to it and what a great personality and all your marketing and colorful stuff, you know, to bring awareness to it. You can't. Oh, make- thank you. <laughs> Um, so as we wrap up, what is some advice that you have for some professional organizers that are maybe new to the industry, maybe just starting? I know you've been doing this for a while now. What are some things that you've learned that you'd like to pass on to our audience? What a great question, Melissa. Thanks. Honestly, what I just want everyone to know that they can do is ask for help. That's how I found Melissa. I was feeling a little stuck in my business and I just needed a little, a little bit of oomph. But honestly, the other thing is, I just want to remind you folks that people are watching. People are looking at your social media. And here's the thing. 
They may not be commenting or liking or sharing your post, but people are seeing it. Keep doing what you're doing. It's so, so important. Keep being authentically just who you are and people will follow and people will see that and love what you do. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So true. Guys, be sure to check out an organized approach on Facebook. And thank you so much for being here today, Mary Ellen. Thank you very much, Melissa. It was a pleasure seeing you and being a part of something amazing like this. Thank you. Yay.